Yo, what's up, everybody? Go ahead and hashtag Lime in the comments. That'll give you a chance to win. Uh, we'll be giving a few things away uh, tonight. We are back. Um, just to kind of take you up to speed of where we're at on this tank real quick. Um, we use the uh, bright orange pigment that is mixed into the uh, clear base coat here. I sprayed about four coats on this tank and then I cleared it with a 2K clear coat, sanded it down with 600 grit and that's where we're at right now. Uh, the reason why I clear coated it is because I'll be doing black graphics over the top and if we happen to have any kind of overspray or anything like that, um, we're easily able to address that by either sanding it off or we could just wipe it off because we do have that layer of clear coat over the top that um, is protecting it. So um, like I said, we can always just, uh, if we have a little bit of overspray, we just sand it right off. But uh, let's get right into it. I have my wife, Ashley, here. See? See what's up, Ashley? Hi, guys. Uh, and so if you have any questions, go ahead and just type them into the comments. And she'll let me know, and I'll see if I can answer them as best as I can. But a couple of things I'll show you that we will be giving away. We do have the aluminum hood panels. Kind of hard to see. I have it up close. We have the aluminum hood panels, and we also have the new. Um, we've been talking about these a little bit. Um, the uh, microfiber rags that are in a roll. So they come in a three pack, or you can buy them singly. But um, you can see them right here. That uh, we'll be giving some of those away, and we'll also be using them. But uh, they're pretty cool. Just rip them off and they're reusable to a certain point usually i'll downgrade them as i go they'll end up being a rag to to clean up my paint and stuff with but um yeah we'll give those a go and give some of those away tonight make sure we get in here a little closer they're saying welcome back and how was the vacation oh the vacation was great we're still a little jet lagged from the other day <laughs> trying to get used to our normal hours how are you feeling ashley i'm tired <laughs> we keep waking up at 4 a.m thinking the day's got to be started so <laughs> it's a long day yeah for sure it's a long day but the vacation was awesome. Spain, Barcelona was beautiful. It's Sevilla. Then we did Morocco and Portugal. So it was a good time and it felt like I was in a fairy tale. So yeah, beautiful. that's I still feel like I'm in a fairy tale. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, good time. It's uh how crazy different the places are that we went to. Okay, real quick, I'm gonna make sure that when I put this first line down is uh, I wanna make sure that I'm um, aiming it to the, the the bottom, like the datum of the of the tank right there. So I see that line and I wanna bring that up instead of, you know, crooked or anything like that, so. Someone said, where you want to cruise? Nope. We just, we flew out of Salt Lake City into Atlanta. And then we flew from Atlanta to Barcelona. We stayed there for how many days? A couple days? Four. Four, four yeah, days. Four days. Then we flew to Seville. Sevilla. 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 I don't know how to say it. So. <laughs> I did learn my Cadillac is named after that city, though, so that's pretty cool. Um, stayed there for how many days? Three. And then we flew to 
Morocco. And that was crazy. That was a little, we got in late at night and uh, didn't have a chance to really see the city. Kind of just uh, woke up to it and it was, it was a shocker. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, right here. Okay, I just laid those two lines. Oh, let me lift this up a little bit so you guys can see now what's going on. There we go. And what I'm going to do here is, actually, I want to go this direction. I'm kind of do, wanting to do like a, a race, racy style um, graphic on this. So my plan is to uh, take this and then I think I was going to do something like that. Hey. Yeah. She's crying. I hear her crying. <laughs> she's trying to get up on the elevator. Yeah, she's not used to that. We're back and then you keep leaving her. Yeah. My dog's down there crying. Someone said, was life a lot different there? What was the craziest culture shock? Yeah, go ahead. What do you think, yeah. Ash? Um, what was the, out of all the places, where was the biggest culture shock? Probably Morocco. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. But it was awesome yeah so awesome definitely different it felt like we were in pakistan really <laughs> with the just the way it looked and the buildings and the uh scenery and <laughs> she's so sad come here so bright you can see the green yes it's so, it's so bright huh Someone said it's so bright you can barely see the green. Oh, really? I can turn that light down a little bit. Here goes. No, oh, he's going to have to bring the dog up here. She's missing us. Okay. Here we go. Jeez, girl. Goodness. Okay, lay down. <laughs> uh, Josh says, I give you all the props for your leafing. That shit is hard, but oddly satisfying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, leafing just takes a little bit of practice. Then someone said, Morocco, but have you, have you ever been to Omaha? <laughs> <laughs> have we been to Omaha? Good question. Uh, okay. uh, we drove through Nebraska, but I'm not sure. Darren said, I've been to Egypt and Morocco is on my bucket list. Oh, yeah. yeah. Egypt would be fun. Egypt's on mine, but not quite yet. And also someone said, Ireland, that's on mine. <laughs> Swampy said, my future is so bright. I got to wear shades. Yeah, it's pretty bright. <laughs> We're definitely going to be knocking this down with some black paint. Ryan Christensen sent a $20 super chat. Oh, yeah, right on, dude. Thank Appreciate you. That. Yeah, thanks. Stephanie, right here by us, huh, you little whiner? <laughs> She's afraid we're going to leave her again. I guess so. <laughs> so what I'm doing is um, I'm just kind of blocking this out. So I got this one I'm blocking out here and this one as well. And then I'll end up trimming these lines down. That's the plan at least. And then I'll run one more across right there.
Okay, so let's trim this. You see how I just pressed that on the tape and then pulled the tape off? And then um, I'm going to trim this one. Shady Vito said, that tape is freaking amazing. Best I've ever used. No bleed under at all. Yeah, right on. Okay, so see how I just trimmed that up? So that kind of made like this shape right there. I don't know what to call that. An upside down L. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and trim this right here. Because we don't want that. Swampy's got us on the big screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I made it. John says, what kind of tape? Uh, this is the 16th inch lime line that I'm using. Um, I like to use 16th inch when I'm because I'm actually using the I'm going to be painting the outside instead of the inside because everything that I'm taping taping out right here, the inside, um, I'm going to mask that out. And we're going to paint on the outside of this. So we want to make sure that with the 16th inch, we're able to make um, finer cut lines rather than use an eighth inch. If I'm using, if I'm using, painting, painting the inside, inside then uh, a lot of times I'll just stick with the eighth inch. Where's your gloves? Laugh out loud. I'm naked. <laughs> Off topic, but have you ever done a video on how you use your Cricut? Uh, I do have a couple of videos, actually. I think you need a bigger stand. Looks like it wants to fall. It does kind of want to like. I uh, have this, this roll under there kind of holding it up. Someone said hard to see what you're doing because that orange is so bright. For sure. Let's see. Let's see if we get in here a little closer. <laughs> Ronald says, I feel like a little puppy when I hear the opening music. I, I want to run around peeing everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get you that excited. <laughs> Austin said, Adam, you're making me nervous with this tank. Well, yeah. Every time it slides, my heart drops. <laughs> well, it yeah. can always be fixed, but I think we're okay. It's, it might sit there. If not, we'll have something to talk about. Good next. Side Motorcycles Whip says, waiting on my products to arrive. Can't wait. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Josh says, for sure, all the products are awesome. They are all I'm using for my project bike. Yeah, badass. Yeah, let's see. Once you get something painted up, we'll see some pictures. They said, that's a better angle. Safety orange is very strong statement. Laugh out loud. John said, just wanted to say thank you for all the information I placed in a bike show with the custom paint I did following your tutorials. Oh, Awesome. Wow, that's awesome. Congrats. Here. So when you clear between layers, are you using clear base or clear coat? Good question. Um, I like to use clear coat. Uh, that way you can, because if you have, so if we're, if after we get these graphics painted, if we wanted to run another graphic over the top, then you're going to end up having a paint edge. And you're going to be able to see that paint edge once the paint goes over the top. So by using a 2K clear coat, top coat, um, and you're spraying it over the top, it's adding a thickness that you would sand down and you can get rid of those edges. Um, also, it allows to, if you have like any kind of overspray, like I talked about earlier, uh, you can pretty much save it by sanding it off. Uh, it looks like I missed a... I missed the stripe right here. What's the name of the orange paint? Uh, the orange paint is uh, bright orange. It's the lime line bright orange pigment. Yeah, I missed a line right there because I did want to break that up. So we got one shape there. You're making everybody nervous about the tank. 
Oh, really? I'm yeah. Not, I'm not nervous. JJ says, that thing's going to fall. I've seen it shift four times. My butt <laughs> cheeks will take a week to relax. <laughs> I'm just glad I'm making everybody nervous. <laughs> <laughs> awesome says, I feel like a passenger riding in a car trying to press a brake. So every time it slides, I want to try and catch it. <laughs> I know that feeling. John, well, stick around. We'll see if it falls or not. <laughs> he won't know until Look, he ends. has no fear. Look at him. John says, I bought the cricket, but don't have enough sense on how to use it. Uh. Yeah, I mean, there's some tutorials online. That's where I learned a little bit, but it's pretty easy to use. Um, I like to use the app on the phone. So whether you're using the iOS or the, uh, what's the other one? Google. Oh, Google. Samsung? Yeah. I don't know. We're an Apple family, so yeah, don't. <laughs> we, don't, we have no idea what that's called. Shady Vito said, I sent a pic of the first lure I made with the tape on your Instagram. Oh, cool. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, and if you've uh, if you bought anything off of Amazon and you have pictures, you can always post the pictures right there on Amazon, and that way everybody can see like, like where you would post a review. Um, there's a spot there where you can post like a picture review which is awesome because people are able to see your work and they're able to see what uh, what you're able to do. Funny you say that because the same time you started talking about that, Josh said, I plan on leaving reviews with pics on Amazon. Oh, okay. Is there any other platform that helps you all out? Oh, man, the, the Amazon really, anything you guys can do on Amazon would um, help me out a ton. Yeah, like the filter balls, that we've sold a few of the, of the filter balls. Excuse me, girls. Let me grab one. Hi, B. Come here. Jeez. Yeah, we've sold a bunch of these. Um, so yeah, if you if you like these, you can always leave a, a photo of it and, and let us know what you think. John says, just got another can of the black for a Corvette bumper I got to paint. Corvette bumper. Nice. How many bags of flake for a stretched bag bike? Uh, for a what kind of bike? How many bags of flake for a stretched bag bike? It's, it kind of depends on if you're painting the inner fairing um and if it has a fairing so stretch bags it may not have a fairing so if it has a fairing um, i would go with three bags um you could get away with two if you don't have a fairing and you just have the tame two fenders in the bags side covers probably be safer with three though is the this pigment a matte finish the so the the uh, clear, no, this is actually, the, it's been coated with clear coat and um, sanded. So it's matte right now, but it's actually gloss clear coat that's over the top. But that's a good question because when it, everything's all said and done, I will be spraying a matte clear coat over the top. So if you want your, uh, if you want your finish to be satin or a matte finish rather than gloss, it's all in the clear coat. So you, you just want to buy the satin clear coat the pigment itself won't determine the uh the finish because it needs to be top coated with something that makes sense awesome so i just learned this from another custom painter and that is you can catalyze clear base coat i've not tried it personally but he's done it for years yep yeah you can do that Swampy said, my wife said the tank looks like a big orange balloon. <laughs> it kind of does. Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah. The shape of this tank is kind of wild. It's like a pancake on top. Never really seen anything like it. Did you teach yourself to paint this detailed through work and hobby, or did you take classes? I want to learn to restore and custom paint. I would love 
a custom light pink low low in the driveway <laughs> oh yeah um i yes yeah, so it, it's a little bit of both um to be honest it's it's years of just practice and then uh, i i just took classes where it was available um learned a little bit on youtube that was out there uh I did go to a technical school and I learned how to um, paint. Basically, I took an automotive refinish class um, where we learned how to take cars and after an accident, put them back into the factory condition. Nothing too exciting. But I, that's where I kind of did learn everything. But uh, to be honest, make sure I get this cut first. To be honest, I mean, just as long as you know the basics of what the paint does, like what paints to use, and um, you know how to fix your problems and stuff like that. That's that's all. It's it's pretty much you learn as you go. But you do kind of need somewhat of a foundation so you know what paint to use. Um, you know, what catalyzed paint is and stuff like that. I do have those short form videos that I'm putting out that answers a lot of those questions. Okay, so I wanted, at first I thought I wanted this to, to keep going all the way through, but I think I'm gonna trim this. Right there, I can get rid of this line. Cause I kind of want it just to swoop up. Are you guys coming out with a matte finish? Uh, I'm still testing some matte finishes. The ones that I've tested so far, I haven't been happy with. Um, so no, right now I'm just using house of color uh, or I will use house of color. So I hear you talk about flow coats when you are clearing. What exactly is a flow coat? Um, so one thing with custom paint that, that you, that most people don't understand is, um, parts can be clear coated multiple times. So this has already been painted and clear coated one time we sanded it smooth. We didn't sand the paint off. We just sanded the clear coat down. So the next layer can, um, layer over the top of it. So, um, we lay our graphics down and we clear it again and say like, okay, we're going to fix a little bit of details, maybe add some drop shadows. Once we clear it again, that's what would be considered a flow coat. And there's, there's different, the term can mean different things. Some people will call it a flow coat when they add a little bit of reducer into their clear coat. And then like the last coat will be a little bit thinner and it allows it to flow out more. Um, flow coats like could also be you know you're all finished you got it cleared you're going to go ahead and just scuff it down and you're going to put it back into the booth for another three coats of clear that could be considered flow coats too because when you go to clear it something that's already been cleared multiple times and it's all smooth your next round of clear coats is going to even out and smooth out a lot better making it easier to cut and buff um and stuff like that it's just going to be the, the more you clear it you'll notice um, it's just smoother when you're finished. Like right now, if I was to clear this over top of the smooth clear coat, it's going to be like glass compared to the first go around still had a little bit of texture and orange peel. That's kind of long winded on that, but hopefully that answered your question. So I'm happy with this so far. I think this looks good. Uh, once again, I followed the bottom of the tank, which is really important. Um, that way it's not like shifted one way or another. My plan is to use this Harley Davidson emblem, well, script, I should say. And that would go right there. So this is going to go into a, in, in a dark gray. This is going to stay orange and the rest of this is going to go black, but we do need to do another graphic that's going to come up over this way. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that quite yet, but We'll play around with some tape and see if we can make something happen. And then we'll go ahead and mask this off. Bill said, just ordered your 
poor gun can't wait to blow some clear through it. Oh, cool. Right on. Yes, that's a good gun. That's the one I actually prefer to use um, all the time. But we do have another gun that's coming in. It's a, has a, it's a mini gun with a 0 .08 tip. Um, so we're going to be able to run that on smaller compressors and we're going to be able to do some more um, finer intricate work with those. Carrie says it's great seeing you guys again. That dry spell sucked a lot out loud. <laughs> It's good to be back, but we're tired. She, she said she goes, goes off if we're alive. Well, so did Adam, and I wanted to so bad. <laughs> we're so tired. So lucky you got a little nappy. Yeah. Okay. Is that looking good right there? We'll make sure that's pushed down really good. All right, let's see what we can do. So I was planning on, said, maybe I can maybe just take that up there. Carrie said, hey, Ashley and Adam, I hope you had a kick-ass birthday, Ashley. I did. It was actually super awesome. You had a Moroccan birthday. I was in Morocco, and I will tell you, we did a, a mom for my birthday. <laughs> I'm not going to explain this to people, okay? I'm not going to explain it, yeah. <laughs> Just look it up. See if it, yeah. It was Basically, you take a shower with a bunch of people. No, they bath you. <laughs> and I have never been so clean in my life and have the softest skin in the world now. It was actually really awesome. Yeah, me too. He scrubbed me pretty hard. I'm actually, my skin still feels raw. He did say, he, 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 oh my gosh, sorry, I mean, He did say, so guys go with guys and then girls go with girls, you know, because in Morocco they, don't like that. So then he was in with some of our the friends, and then he he got off the table, and, he, and my friend's husband said, and he said to him, "Wow, they scrub you with 180 grit." Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, is. of course, everything's compared compared to motorcycle or. <laughs> yeah. So imagine getting eight, 100, 180 grit on your skin <laughs> with a pad. <laughs> That's what it felt like. It hurt. No, it didn't. It would. Well, it was a little rough, but. It felt so good. No, out. I think the dude was tough. Was being tough on us. <laughs> that scrubber. <laughs> you guys are real dirty. John says t-shirts. Uh, we do. We don't have them on yet, though, do we? No, that was one of the things we were trying to do before we left, and trying so hard to get them on, and we ran out of time. But. But yeah, we got to get those on. Harass um, Adam. Yeah, har give me harassments, will you? I need it. <laughs> uh, but I, we do have, yeah, the, the shirts, we have the, uh, the towels that'll be on too, those microfiber towels I showed you. Oh, we also have, might as well show you what we're talking about it. We do have um, these, they call them onion boards, but it's like a, basically it's a, it's a stack of paper. You can, you can use it for pinstriping or you can use it for, um, laying out Bondo, mixing up Bondo. But uh, I'll, I'll be pairing those up with, uh, one will be paired up with a, a Bondo blade and the other one will be paired up with a, a pinstriping brush. Kind of like a little starter kit for that. That's what the, this is what the plan is. Jordan said you should make a ribbon like Rob Vanderslice. Oh, yeah. I like, I like his style. His that blows my mind, though. I just still can't wrap my head around it. What causes activator to gel after using only one time and kept in a thermostat controlled environment? Hmm. It may, may not have had the cap on it all the way. Um, that would be the only thing that I could think of that would gel that up. Okay. I'm going to. I like the way that this is, is wrapping around right here. The only thing I don't like is I feel like it needs to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off and we're going to. What are you sanding the clear with before adding another coat of paint or clear? Well, he walked off. Matt, I walked off. <laughs> um, 
I used actually one of these uh, sanding sponges. There's a little smudge right there I need to get rid of. So that's the nice thing about clear coating these. Um, because if you have any kind of, like I said, any kind of problem, it just sands right off. Bill said, whoa, wait, minigun coming soon? Yep, uh, hopefully next week. What's the max for clear coating something? Uh, the max uh, pressure? Okay, let's see here. Let me get a good angle at this, huh? Let me give you guys a better angle at this, too. There we go. Try any good coffees, they said. Yeah, there was a lot of good coffee. There actually was a lot of good coffees. And I think I had a croissant every freaking morning. They were so good. <laughs> yeah, you love croissants. See if I like. Oh uh, yeah, I like that. I like that. Chad said right here. the mini gun you have coming out. You said it can be used with a smaller compressor. Will I still be able to use a big compressor, or just turn down the air pressure? Yeah, you just turn down the air pressure. Yes. Hi. Big country said, "So are you guys buying a bidet now?" <laughs> <laughs> they had those there too. Didn't try it, but those frightened me. <laughs> okay, so so far so good. I'm liking that. What we got going on there. What I'll do is maybe I'll just match that up with the same width as what we have going on here. Oh, nice. Looks like um, old man Babs gifted somebody a, a membership. Oh, cool. Awesome. Thanks for that. Ink Master Jeff said, got all that dead skin off. Laugh <laughs> out loud. <laughs> Clean like a baby. It was. Uh, which place do you think had the best food, Ash, that we went to? Portugal. Portugal? That's what I think, too. Portugal had really good food. But we don't like a lot of seafood. So I would say if you like seafood, probably... Spain would be better, but we just don't really like a lot of seafood stuff. So, yeah, not a huge fan. Does Limeline have a website? Uh, yes, uh, limelinepaintsupply.com. You can find everything there, um, or you'd be able to just type in Limeline on Amazon, you'd be able to see our products there as well. Okay, so I'm liking these double lines I have here. And I went ahead and laid down a piece of tape. Whoa, see, we're sliding still. Right here, and I'll end up trimming that. I but I do want to do... The line's okay. Um, I feel like it looks good, but I feel like I may be putting a little bit of something in there. Maybe we'll stagger it a little bit. It looks like Buddy got the membership. Buddy? Yep, from Old Man Dabs. Gifted it to Buddy. All right, I appreciate cool. that. What about clear in a gallon? Uh, clear coat in a gallon, that is coming, yes. We'll have uh, in, uh, an overall economy clear, which will, will be around, uh, it'll be under 100 bucks for a gallon. And then... We will also have a, a high-end clear, um, which is a high solids clear coat. Phenomenal stuff. Um, and that's going to be around uh, $200 for, um, it's a, it's a two to one mixture. So you end up getting more clear coat. So I think you have a, a gallon and a half sprayable on that. So that'd be around 200 bucks. So let's see. Ryan said, I need some of that masking plastic you've been using. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be using some of that here in a second. 
Uh, that hasn't came in yet. We haven't. I'm still working on. I'm getting that product, but uh, yeah, I'm hoping to be able to add that pretty soon. <laughs> Old man dad says bigger the gift was least I could do for scaring your daughter while y'all was on vacay. <laughs> <laughs> we should, we talked about that today. You did. We did talk about that today because I, Adam told me about it, and then I was like, "Oh, I wonder who it was that was at the shop." And then when we got back, I asked, and it was actually my sister-in-law and our oldest daughter. They just they said sometimes when they're there at the shop, it's like there's big windows, and they just get they, they get scared. They, they so get spooked really easy. They get spooked really easy. <laughs> And they were like, we didn't know who it was, what was going on, so we just ran inside. <laughs> so that's hilarious that you scared them. <laughs> yeah. Next time, go bang on the door. No. <laughs> no. They will be freaked out. They won't want to come to work. Oh, yeah, true. Don't do that until we need them. <laughs> I did tell them it was haunted. They didn't like that. Yeah, that's probably the problem is he keeps telling them that freaking building taunting i'm like don't tell him that it is not it, he's just yeah the guy that used to be in there passed away something happened i can feel it something's not right but don't but you're right don't tell them that because i don't want to show up cliff said the shipping would kill you don't it for the clear the gallon of clear the shipping, it's not that bad. And on Amazon, we offer free shipping, so you're going to get it for free. Old Man Dab said, so can I pick up product locally from you since I'm literally 15-minute drive? Uh, yes, you can. You just have to. Um, the, the best way to um, to catch us there would be What time are we usually there? Well, I'm not usually there, but uh, is it noon? Yeah, usually around noon to like anything past 3.30. Um, there's probably nobody there because that's when all the orders are finished. And uh, basically we're an e-commerce company, so we, we don't really have a storefront, but everything is there. So if you are local, we can help you out. Um, you could also text me. And then I can meet you down there too if there's something certain that you want or I don't know. Ethan said, Welcome back. Got my leaf kit in. That is so much fun. Do you have base coat black available in gallons? Uh not in gallons, no. No, the base coats are only gonna be in quartz. But uh I mean, depending on what you're painting, a quart will go a long ways. Great country said, I have a bidet. It has heated water, heated seats, nine different settings, remote control, blow dryer. I never go back to toilet paper. Really? We had we were sitting in the airport like watching videos. How do they use these? We're just wondering because it's someone also said it's like a copper stream just coming. Like not a stream, but it just looks so okay. violent. But <laughs> I didn't dare. <laughs> but we did YouTube how to <laughs> I did it. I did. Me and my girlfriends did. Not you. <laughs> Dave said, ghost adventures are coming soon. <laughs> Thank goodness for Amazon Prime. Yes, sir. Ronald said, the two of you have saved my life. Really? Oh, wow. Literally? That's good to hear. That is good to hear. Cliff said, looks like I know where I'm getting my clears then. Only do high solid. Yep. You can, uh, I mean, it all kind of depends on what you're doing. Like, you know, um, these get cleared multiple times, so there's nothing wrong with using a more economy clear as you're going and then finish it up with 
a, a high solids. Uh, it polishes up. They both polish really great. Ron says, thank you both for taking the time to teach others. That's our pleasure. Yeah, you're welcome. Did I do this right? Yeah, okay. Big Jerry said, after you do graphics, how many coats of clear coat do you use and what pressure setting on your spray gun? Uh, say that one more time. After you do graphics, how many coats of clear coat do you use and what pressure setting on your spray gun? Um, so pressures, uh, how, how many coats of clear coat? It's usually gonna be three to four coats. Um, kind of depends on how thick the paint edge and how thick you're spraying the, the paint. Whenever you have graphics on too and you're getting ready to clear coat something, it's a good idea to, to first spray down a couple of light ground coats. They're also called tack coats. You spray that down and that will um, kind of seal things up. So like candies have a tendency to be able to uh, soak up into the clear coat and then it can uh, sag and run once it soaks up into it. So adding a couple, spraying a couple of light coats to get a little bit of a barrier on top. Um, so realistically, you're spraying more like five coats if you're gonna count those small tack coats to start. And also the thinner you spray those coats, the faster they're gonna dry. So if you spray a tack coat and you're in 70 degrees, it, within five minutes, you're able to go with another co coat over the top of that. Now, if you say like your parts are freshly painted and you just slam a hard, heavy coat on top of those graphics, well, there's a good chance that if they're candies, they're going to soak up into that clear coat. And then clear, what it does is it self-levels. It kind of smooths out. So what it does is it kind of, it'll start somewhere. Once you get enough clear on there, it kind of just moves a little bit, you know, what in that that if that clear coat sucks up some of those candies, it's gonna sag it and clear it with it and and pull it with it. So if you have any tape lines, it's gonna bleed up under those um, where those other colors aren't supposed to be. All right, I think we're about at the midpoint here. So you wanna give something away? Let me catch up on a couple of these questions so I don't lose oh, my spot. Okay. The free shipping on Amazon, is it only for US? Um, yes, because if you're in Canada, I think you're going to get, um, it's actually, the, the way that works is it's fulfilled through Amazon FBA. They buy it from us and then they sell it to you. So I'm not sure what they do. But in order to, to not have to do all the paperwork and stuff like that to be able to send to Canada. Um, that's how that works. So yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, that you're probably getting the pan shipping. Could you mix base with clear to make it go further? Can you can miss? Yes. Uh, you would mix base coat with clear base coat to make it go further. Um, however, it's going to have uh, less pigment and less qualities uh, to, to, of being able to cover. So it's going to make more coats. But I do that, like, say, like, um, say, like, I'm doing drop shadows, and I just want to use base coat black. What I'll do is I can add a little bit of clear base coat into that black. That way you have to spray more paint in order for it to, to show up. So you have a little more give when it comes to that. But right now, I, I use candy black now where I used to use black base coat, candy black's much better option. Um, but uh, yeah, anything you want to kind of lighten up, you can always add a clear base coat to that or inner coat clear. What's the difference with quality clear and high solids? Um, so an overall clear, was so a high solids clear is um, going to have, it's going to be made out of uh, a different, um, thicker kind of clear that basically builds it's meant to build higher and faster with less coats but yeah high high build 
it says high solids, but you can consider it high build. Would be a better name for it. Planning on using more urethane base coats, how hard is it to get rid of waste and use thinner? Uh, one more time about that. Planning on using more urethane base coats. Okay. How hard is it to get rid of waste and use thinner? Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe I don't really understand that question. Uh, but yeah, I just use lacquer thinner to clean things up. So there shouldn't be too much waste. Oh, I mean, you can always put the lacquer thinner in a spray bottle. That's what I do. Or you can put them in these little squeeze bottles. And then you could just clean out your equipment using that. The spray bottle actually goes the farthest, though. If you use an industrial spray pump bottle, fill that up with that lacquer thinner. And you can spray your equipment out that way. Okay, this is looking pretty dang good. Ron said, the one that said that we saved his life, he said, not enough time to tell the story, but I broke my back in 2011, so now I'm a disabled diesel tech. Oh. Oh, man, that sucks. Sorry to hear that. But it sounds like you're on the up and up, though. Where did I put that thicker tape at? How many days can your art set before clear coat? Oh, good question. Um, you're, so it's best not to go over a week. Um, anything over a week, you're kind of risking it. So, um, so, so yeah, I wouldn't wait longer than a week. Remember, you can always clear coat it and then sand it smooth at any time. And then um, you're good to go at that point. It also, if you let say like you, you have something clear coated just like this and it's sanded smooth and, and you wait a week to lay down your base coat, you're best off to just give that another sand real quick um, before laying those graphics. Because what happens is the clear coat will self heal and some of those scratches that we're putting into it, you know, because we're we're sanding it, putting in scratches and those scratches are what the paint binds to and holds to. So it needs that. So if it does, if it self heals like that, um, it's just better to, if it's already sanded, just to sand it one more time real quick. Okay. I'm going to take some eighth inch and, uh, what I'm going to do here is just on the end of these tips right here. Ron said he ran across you on YouTube and it, you rekindled uh his interests he says he watches every video and tries to mimic what you do he used to be a custom baiter back in the 90s so all right I'm glad on. to hear that we've helped you that's awesome yeah it's a lot it's a it's a much different world than it was back in the 90s that's for sure uh, back in i i wasn't painting in the 90s but i think i was start, i started painting in 2006 is when uh i went to school and uh learned airbrush graphics a few years after that yeah glad to hear that we can help you out and inspire you to rekindle and do it again because not a lot of people can do this so it's, well they you it's can <laughs> you can you no know, it takes time babe uh, well you I see people that it really literally it's like they're this is the first I get I get it all the time. They'll send me pictures like hey, this is my first paint job. And it's like, wow, I'm like, what do people say when you show them this? They're are they blown away? Because usually, you know, you go from not painting anything and painting something crazy with candy paint and metal flake. It just looks amazing. And I remember, I remember that feeling. I mean, I'm kind of immune to to the paint, you know. I mean, I I like what's going on here. I think I'm doing a pretty good job. I'm not as excited about it as I used to be, but well, say what you want, but it takes time and practice. So, yeah. let's give away a couple things. Okay, let's do it. What do you want to give away? Let's give away the aluminum hood. 
and then they'll also get the because you're going to be able to win it before you can get it these um cool rolls of microfiber and these are going to be come they're going to come in a three pack and they're going to be like 19 bucks free shipping on amazon so um yeah i think they're cool hood and towels hood and towels they're gonna win them both they might come in separate packages though fyi it's not the best combo to to uh put together but but yeah let's give away that Okay, let's do it. Randy Nish. Nish. Is it Nish? I'm going to say Nish. Yeah. I think Nish would be with a knee, right? Yeah, you won, buddy. Um, all you got to do is shoot us an email at info at limelinepaintsupply.com. And uh, we just need to know where you live, and we can send it to you. I'm liking that, too. I'm liking what I'm doing here. Maybe. Let's spin it again? Uh, let's wait, because I got some other... Uh, we got some stuff going on here. You do? No, I... Okay, so my plan is, is because this is going to go black, and I'm going to end up doing some... Um, not tonight because we're going to, we're going to run out of time and I'm, we're, we're pretty um, exhausted right now, but, um, I am going to add some light gray graphics over the top. Um, but so, yeah, I think that's, I'll go ahead and leave that because I'll maybe add a graphic there. Also here, I'm going to end up probably doing the same thing. So this will be orange, orange, orange. This will all be black. But then once that's painted black, we're going to be able to add some more graphics to the top of that. Usually, like I says, I'll end up clearing it in between and then sanding it smooth again. So we can repeat this process as many times as we need to. I mean, you don't want to go crazy where you, ha you have 30 coats of clear. But if you have to, sometimes you ha really have to if, if you're doing intricate paint jobs like this. So I always like to clear coat things in between. So I'll add more layers as we go but uh okay liking that i'm gonna take the this eighth inch right here and let's get a better view of this make sure it doesn't fall what's your thoughts on water water-based paint versus solvent paste uh solvent base is really what i would always prefer um i do and sometimes I have used water base in the past, but you, do you do remember that um, a lot of water base have a hard time running through an airbrush? They're prone to clogging, and they too, they do take a lot longer to dry. And it does take more paint to actually um, to uh, to get the job done. You have to have a lot of patience when it comes to waterborne. If you're start if you're starting out, it's the first thing that you're excuse me um it's best to start if you ask me it's best to start start with a solvent based my dog's attacking me what the hell yeah okay so i'm gonna take the eighth inch and i feel like i want to run one line just right all the way down um, the bottom of this said your work is amazing thanks for sharing all your knowledge yeah you're welcome anytime anytime okay i'm liking this okay so i'm gonna go ahead and um so the plan is 
so I ran that eighth inch line right there. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna leave this orange, everything above this line. It's gonna go black, but we are gonna mask off um, these three uh, quadrants right here, and then we'll also mask off this so this stays, stays um, orange as well. But I will run one more line. What I'll do is I'll take the same eighth inch. Got to fix this one. That's a little wobbly. There, that's better. Brian said, I'm taking the Texas Roundup class down here by Houston, all because I found your channel and found a passion for paint. Uh, what class are you taking? Texas Roundup. Texas class. Roundup. Do I know what that class is? Huh. That's cool. Yeah, um, Texas has a lot of good stuff going on. I know that uh, another company is putting on a class down there too. I think it's a thousand bucks. But uh, a lot of good artists are there. I think Master Jeff said, really appreciate your lives. I've learned a lot. Yeah, appreciate that. I feel like the lives, you definitely learn a lot more than um, some of the other shorter videos. I am looking to do more longer form content, though. So uh, I do have a um, a metal flake tank and fender that I'm getting on this early this next week where I'll be filming some longer form content that will hopefully explain more of the process. What yeah. size needle would you recommend for someone new to airbrushing? Needle for the airbrush, I would say 0 0.05. Uh, is that correct? Did I say that right? Yeah, yeah. 0 0.05. Most airbrushes are 0 0.35, 0 0.035. Um, but it does, the smaller the needle size in the airbrush, uh, the more prone to clogging. And most people give up airbrushing because they're it's usually because their airbrush is spitting and and clogging up and they get frustrated with it and they end up just putting it to the side um, and a lot of it's just because they haven't learned how to first operate or clean the airbrush and um, the biggest thing is they just don't know how to thin it out and reduce it uh, the paint to make it work um, so having that a little bit bigger and needle size i feel like you're going to get less a detail but when you first start you really can't you don't have the airbrush control to paint the little details so it's like something you kind of have to grow into so having the little bit bigger tip i feel like um is a little more forgiving when it comes to that do you have a website uh yeah um limeline um was it limeline paint supply.com uh, for the products the uh, i do have a website for my um my paint as well time warp custom paint.com and time warp mc.com and obviously here on youtube all right we're looking good. easiest process hblp enamel uh hblp Process HBLP question mark enamel question mark. Huh? Yeah, I don't know that one. I think he's asking what's the easiest process HBLP or enamel. No, no, no. Uh, HBLP is a good uh, paint gun. Yes. Okay, my dog just won't leave me alone. When, yeah. Here. When using metal flake, what size flake will give you more of the dancing effect? Um. Well, the Limeline has a, a mixture of the 0 0.08 and 0 0.04, um, and it also is small enough to be able to cover, so you don't get like the salt and pepper effect. So I feel like having multiple sizes um, makes it dance a little more. Um, not necessarily the bigger the flake, the better. Um, once the flake starts getting like into like the 0.25 and stuff like that, 
it gets uh, a little distracting. It start, starts to look like styrofoam, and it really doesn't have any much more sparkle. Okay, I'm liking, I'm liking this. So we're, we're going, going black here. Orange. All this. This will stay orange. This will stay orange. This will go black. And these will go uh, orange. And then black down here. So cool. Let's go ahead and mask this up. Adam, when you start first start on a tank, do you have an idea what you're going to do? Or do you just start laying lines? Um, it's kind of both. Uh, what I'll do is... I'll just start, I'll have an idea because if it's a customer's bike, they'll kind of give me an idea of what they want. So I kind of try to follow that. Um, but a lot of it's just like laying down tape lines that complement the shape of the part. Um, when I decided to do this graphic here, I, is my lens a little dirty? Does my lens look dirty? Does that, does that look fuzzy? Hold on. I think that's better. Um, what was I saying? Sorry. <laughs> totally spaced it. What was the uh, question again? Oh, uh, it's kind of both. Um, when before I did this one, I am painting a fairing to this by bi the bike, and the way that the style lines on the fairing looked i kind of mocked that up a little bit and that's how i came up with this particular design um, i like the way that it looked and it, it went well with the fairing so i kind of just wanted to do something similar here on the tank even though the fairing's not painted yet this is the first part i'm painting uh but i kind of knew because i um i kind of mocked that up and to see what it was going to look like but in most cases, I'll paint the tank first, and um, whatever I paint on the tank, I can usually just kind of match it up with the fenders. Class in De Texas, someone says, is it the paint coat class? Revolt is. Tammy is putting on a class. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, paint coat. Yep. Someone, That's the one I had in mind. SMR Custom said, I'll be there. Um, Balvers Custom said, I used to watch Mike Lavalli Billy, oh, yeah. open Mike night live feeds until he passed away. I stumbled across your videos and have been following since. Really dig your style. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Mike was a big inspiration for me and I actually took a class from here down in Salt Lake City of his and learned back when the fire was the big craze realistic fire and it still kind of is because i mean you can use fire as a complement to um different graphics now i mean having your bike all the way flamed out with fire is not what the average person is really wanting anymore um but you can always use fire to complement um graphics like i'm saying you know a little bit of fire around a, an emblem or an eagle or something like that he was the best of that actually i have a i still have the artwork that i painted that he taught in that class it's actually hanging up downstairs yeah he was the king of skull and fire the texas roundup is with mm, pistolero oh yeah pistola Blur. Caesar Zamora from Texas Metal and Tim Lowry. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Tim? Okay. Yeah, you got good guys there. Someone Tim's asked. like, Tim's seriously one of the, he has now become probably one of the best airbrush artists. He was good years ago and always has been but like lately it's just i don't know if it's the way that he's um his graphics kind of like uh com he, he'll he'll uh collage his graphics together in like a lowrider style of 
it's really cool. I mean, other people are doing work just about as good, but he's just doing a lot of it. It's, I think you can compare him to like OG Abel and who's the other guy that's uh, Fonzie. Both those guys, like you can compare him with those guys. Um, Tim's just putting out a lot of work. So it just seems like he just keeps getting better. Someone asked earlier, how long until you got a base over your primer? I'd like to know if there's a window when you're doing a mechanical bond to epoxy primer that I've got to be in for best results. Um, you know, you, like I said, a, a, a lot of these paints are self healing. So once you scuff them up after a while, they're going to um, not have that mechanical bond that you're looking to have. Um, so I wouldn't leave it for more than a week, um, really. And it's and if you do just and you do sand it and you do let it sit, it's it's as simple as just um, grabbing a, a six hundred pad and scuffing it back up real quick again to get that uh, that grit back. Any more thoughts about a live class yet? Uh. A live class? Oh, in real person? <laughs> um, yeah, we're it, we might have one this year. I don't know. We're more focused that if we're going to do classes, we may actually um, get a setup to where we're able to travel, and we would be able to to uh, to come to you guys because I know that's what. Um, I know there's a few classes that work like that, kind of traveling. I know Rob Vanderslice, he, that's kind of what he does. It seems to work out for him. But yeah, I would like to have it, you know, I think it would be cool. Like if, if there was a body shop that, um, or some kind of business that had a parking lot to where we would be able to pull up with our equipment. Cause you know, we have a blow up booth um, I always kind of wanted to get like set up a trailer to be able to basically have a, uh, a class on wheels because to get all the students to come down to, to, uh, to Utah, I feel like it's a lot more work than if we were just to come, uh, to you guys, you know, once we had a certain amount of people that were interested to make it worth it. What do you think about that, Ashley? Sounds fun to me. <laughs> I didn't even say that. How long do you wait before you taken off the tape? This tape? Um, I'm going to wait till I apply the paint and it's dry. But that is also a good question because with with tape, you really um, tape is only supposed to be left applied for so long. Like you don't want to like, for instance, um, unless you're using a really high performance tape, you don't want to leave the tape on for more than like three days. Because uh, what's happened, what can happen is those residues, um, the adhesive from the tape could end up sticking to your paint. So really, the minimum on most tape would be three days. So I wouldn't go more than three days on uh, most tapes. But um, I know that our tape is six days. I think this more transparent tape is three days. The other tape is six days. And then um, the green tape that we have that's not quite out yet, um, that's like uh, two weeks. But really, three days, is you shouldn't leave it on for longer than that. You guys should try making some of the glass flake for uranium glass. That stuff looks wild under a black light. Huh. Uranium glass? That's cool. What is the easiest process to paint and what materials to use? Uh, the easiest process to paint? Wait, is that what it was? Uh-huh. Uh, what's the easiest thing, thing to paint? Mm. 
panel painting is pretty easy. Like what we're doing here, we're just creating panels and then we're just taping them off. Um, I would say that's probably the easiest to start with, you know, a panel paint job. Um, learn how to do flames. Your phone keeps on focusing in and out, in and out. Yeah. And it's weird. Look, it's like shaky. There we go. It's probably the color. It's going crazy. To duplicate that to the other side, are you going to use a pounce pattern? Um, no, uh, you can. Pouncing works better with pinstriping because you're usually not taping. Um, when it comes to pouncing and then you have to tape, the chalk that you use uh, can cause problems with your tape sticking. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, basically run a piece of tape line from horizontally across the tank to um, create guidelines and as long as they're close you're you're gonna be fine uh, but yeah it, pouncing works but it works not as good when it comes to custom paint uh, pinstriping works great it's okay. definitely an old school method painting the engine block what's the proper way to go about it uh, you're going to want a, a high temperature paint. Um, yeah, you, uh, an epoxy primer. And, uh, to be honest, I haven't painted a whole lot of, I've never painted an engine block ever in my life. So I really don't know. I painted, uh, um, engine parts, but uh, not a block, but I'm guessing just a high heat paint, high temperature paint would be would be good zane said meant to say glass flake from from uranium glass yeah that's crazy the glass flake that we have is actually not um glass it says on the package it's uh um synthetic glass because really you don't want to be spraying glass anyways wouldn't be the, the best thing to spray um, but uh, it's a synthetic glass, yeah. Okay, so you see we have these all taped up. That's taped up. That looks good. Ever thought of doing a video on painting motorcycle cases or something similar? Hmm. I haven't, um, like the cases. Yeah. I haven't really had the need to ever do that. Or in fact, nobody's ever asked me, uh, but yeah, I'll keep that in mind. If I ever have to, I would, I can definitely do that. Uh, seems pretty easy though. I mean, you definitely, definitely want to take them off and, and, uh, you know, if it's bare metal, epoxy primer is the way to go. It's going to offer the most corrosion resistance Tom Lobb sent a five dollar super chat sticker yeah right on said, Tom. I've learned a lot from your videos do you ever collaborate with other artists also what's your favorite favorite object to paint hmm do I collaborate yeah so I've collaborated with uh, Rob um, also we've had carport customs on here We've never really painted together though. Like, when's the last time I collaborated with somebody? Huh. John Booth? Oh, yeah, John. John Booth, and he's a phenomenal airbrush artist as well. Shoe painter. Extraordinaire. But we painted a skateboard together. What's your favorite object to paint? Oh, yeah. Mm. I like, ch I like, uh, like a chopper tank, either like a wassail tank or like an alien tank. Small, skinny, easy. It's 
probably my favorite. It's also you can make the most money. Mr. C said, Adam, Ashley, did you enjoy your trip? Loved it. Still, Still trying to recover. Yes, we loved it. I'm trying not to fall asleep. <laughs> your eyes are getting heavy. I just need to stare at the bright orange tank. Maybe it'll keep there me you awake. Go. Well, we're getting close here. Josh Anderson gifted five Time Warp memberships. What? Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes, and with that membership, uh, you know, guys, that you do get a discount off the um, Limeline website on the Big Cartel. Um, and I do have, we do, uh, every once in a while we, we will do, um, uh, prizes, some giveaways. Speaking of that, we need about do another giveaway here tonight. Well, I need to catch up on a lot of questions. You're okay. kind of long winded tonight. Okay. Sorry. Wow, go ahead. Let's go. Okay. You go. I'm glad people are talking. Either that or you're putting me to sleep. <laughs> How? Is that fluorescent I'm orange? I'm sorry? Is that fluorescent orange? Uh, it is. Yep, it's the bright orange, lime line, bright orange pigment powder. Does mica powder mix with inner coat base coat the same like pigment powder? Uh, yes, it will. The areas at the bottom of the tank looks like some of the old school Harley tanks. Yeah, it kind of does. Looks like memberships he gave are to Mike, DeWitt, Brian. That's awesome. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Josh. Paul says, I got my start in airbrushing and custom painting in the 1970s after meeting Von Dutch in 1971. Holy crap. At a motorcycle shop in North Phoenix near my home. I have been custom painting for 50 years. Holy cow. That's awesome. Cool. Well, thanks for being here. Looks like. I'm actually honored to have you here. Painting that long. Yeah, for real. Looks like Travis G also got a membership from Josh. Yeah, thanks, Josh, hooking it up. I bought one of the panels Mike painted on his live feeds. Really? Yeah, because I know he used to, like, uh, he knocked them off, I think. That's cool. Can you airbrush portraits? I've got a chopper that was issued in Easy Rider 2018. The guy I bought it from had his dad's ashes mixed in the paint and the paint. So after I loaded up the bike, uh, I took tank off and handed it to him. Wow. That's cool. Darren says, I have 14 acres you can park on. Not that loud. There we go. Dan, really, that's all we need. I would like to be able to, be able to pull up with a trailer, um, like one of those industrial canopies, a blow-up booth, some equipment, a generator, and some supplies, really. That's all that we're, we would really need. David said, class on wheels would be so cool. Travis G said, class on wheels would be awesome. I'm in Florida, though. Laugh out loud. Make it a vacay. Oh, yeah, we'll take it. We'll go to Florida. Ever been to Disney World, someone says? Would love to. No, haven't. Have if you? you? No. I don't think so. If you come to New York next year, I will have a brand new shop 
60 by 100 we could use for a class. We are choosing new booths now. Nice. That sounds awesome. Are you going to Daytona Bike Week? Uh, no, but this bike will be there, though. Yeah, this bike is, there's some special parts. The bags, I guess, are special. I don't know. But yeah, this, this bike will be there. Well, you won't be able to miss this one. No, you'll, you'll know it when you see it. Rusty said, tanks in the shop being painted now, but this shop can't airbrush portraits. I need a chick airbrushed on top of my new tank. Hmm. Yeah, I do. I do airbrush portrait, but, uh, portraits, but uh, it's not what I really like to do. That said, come to Florida. I have five acres with 1,500 square foot shop with the paint booth. There we go. See, that's all I need. We would just need 10 or 12 more people that were interested in that area. But yeah, okay, I got that part done. Let's see. It's 40 to 50 degrees too cold to paint. I ordered a bunch of your stuff, but live in Colorado and it's not going to be warm anytime soon. Uh, yes, that is, that's a little chilly to be painting in. Um, yeah, maybe a space heater, garage heater or something to get it warmed up a little bit. Um, at least get it up to like 65. Maybe 60, but. Um, anything into the 50s, you're going to have a hard time with that paint drying. Looks like a lot of people are from Florida. Travis says, come to Florida. Carrie said, I'm just north of Tampa. Fat Lack said, I'm right next to Jackson, too. Oh, really? Wow. A lot of people from Florida. Josh said, I would definitely attend that. Middleburg. There's a big car show here in Lola, Wisconsin. I think you guys would be a good fit there. Yeah, I actually, a lot of my family lives in Wisconsin. Yeah, my uncle actually, my, that side of my uncle's family still lives in Wisconsin. I think he works for three or he did work for 3m down there okay looking good make sure that that's all masked up so we're going to end up getting a lot of overspray underneath here so let me grab some more tape you going to finish this tank no no no, it won't be finished because I only got one half of the side. And then um, there's going to be more graphics in the black with some uh, gray tones. Like I I plan on like putting like little blocks of like gray right here. And then probably right here, I'll block out some gray here too. So it'll be black and then I'll put gray over the top once the black's down. Uh, we won't do that tonight because... Um, we're super tired, <laughs> but we are getting quite a bit done here. Okay, that's looking good. I wanted to show you a new airbrush I'm testing as well. Check out this thing. It has an oversized cup. This thing is a point, uh, Let's see, what is this? To be honest, I don't know what this is. Um, it's either a point, uh, zero 0.05 or a point zero 0.07. Let me see if I can. I can't tell. I'd be guessing. But let's give this thing a shot. We'll get some, fill it up with some black.
What's catalyzed urethane, or is it just base coat with hardener? Uh, base coat, yeah, there is. You can put a hardener in the base coat. Um, is it necessary? Absolutely not. Um, you could run into some other problems if you do catalyze your base coats. Um, the next layer could not stick on to them uh, being catalyzed. So I never liked it for that reason. And to be honest, I've never had a problem with having uncatalyzed base coat. Like it's a, uh, you have that top coat that's catalyzed. That's a two part catalyzed for those that don't know part a part B when those two mix together, it uh, catalyzes and it uh, chemically hardens rather than just like base coat here. All, all that is, is just regular base coat. There's nothing else in this. The only other thing we'll add to this is a uh, urethane base coat reducer, which will thin this out, but that's not going to do anything but thin it out. It's not, um, it's, there's no uh, activator or anything in that. <laughs> Talking about classes, have you ever gone to the one in SoCal? I've heard Scott McKay and Rhino go to it. Hmm. I know those two guys, but I haven't. I haven't heard of the class. Yeah. Have you heard of Joe Martin's airbrush work? Oh yeah. I hate painting tour packs. I can't tell you why, but I hate them. Oh, my God. Don't get me on tour packs. Those things are terrible. I've seen just... someone say something about you doing up a welding helmet. I like to see that myself. Yeah, I uh, I haven't done one. I've never painted a welding helmet, but I've always kind of wanted to. Is there anything different between pigment paint versus regular base coat? I see some pigments look more dull than others. Uh, base coats are usually a pigmented paint. Pigmented paint means that it's um, opaque and it's going to cover. They should be the same. Um, and once you top coat them, they'll, they'll obviously look different. What type of airbrush do you use? I just got two new ones and has one in 20 years. Um, this is one I'm testing from a manufacturer. Um, this is the same the same manufacturer that makes my paint guns. They do have this uh, small trigger airbrush. This is going to be the first time I've actually ever used this. But um, if you're looking to buy something, an airbrush, try the Avante um, at Harbor Freight. That's going to be your best value. Where would I go to order products with having a membership now to get the discount? You would go to the Limeline Big Cartel website. So basically it's limeline.bigcartel.com. And then uh, once you get into the membership prop um, on YouTube, you'll see that there's a discount code on there. And then you just uh, enter in that code at, at checkout. Darren Plank said, hit me up if you get serious. I'm in Topeka, Kansas, so middle of the country. Oh, yeah. Cool. And that would be... That would be great because I'm sure there's people around that area. Okay, so let's see how this thing works, huh? This will be my first time. So it's still a dual action. It's still pull back for air. So once you pull it back to right there, you got full air coming out. And then the farther you pull back the trigger, the more fluid comes out. fur right there. Okay. Yeah, that's working actually really good. Let me turn that fan on.
Yeah, I like this thing. It's going to take a few coats to be able to get full coverage on this. Love the trigger airbrush. Looks comfortable to you. It is. Obviously, you're not going to get the detail like you would on a button, uh, a top button feed or a button push. Because the, the action with this and being able to just push a little bit of paint out um, using your finger that way is harder to control than if you were to push down and pull back. You could really just rock the trigger and uh, apply a small amount of paint. So if you're looking to paint murals one day, um, you're best off just to go ahead and start with the push button because it's going to be hard to paint murals with this. Not to say you can't do it uh, because I, I, I've tried before and I, I can paint murals. I just can't do it to the detail like with a, like with a button airbrush. But if you ever plan on doing murals, it'd be better just to start with the button. You can also do this with a paint gun. Um, however, just keep in mind if you're if you're going to paint this with a paint gun, you're going to end up with thicker et paint edges because naturally the paint gun is laying out bigger droplet sizes, and it's going to lay out more paint. This one's obviously a lot slower, but we're less pain is doing more. I do like this bigger cup, that's for sure. The air pressure you're using right now. I'm at full air pressure, whatever the, the uh, compressor will give me. Um, so I'm around 20 PSI right now. So once again, um, like I've said this plenty of times before, air pressure is relevant to um, how thick your paint is. So if your paint's thicker, you're going to need more air pressure. If your paint's thinner, almost like water, you're not going to need a whole lot of air pressure in order to spray that out. Adam's Custom Paint Shop said, working in Iraq right now and love the videos. I'm sorry, what was that? Is that, that a question? question? Oh, okay. I have a hard time hearing you with that fan on. Adam's Custom Shop just gifted 10 memberships wow holy cow yeah that's awesome right on thank you adam's paint shop adam's like custom it. shop it's I'm pretty cool. sure that's where we have the hoodies from right oh is it oh yeah his name's adam okay yeah i forgot yeah that's uh adam from the uh we gave away some of his uh apparel he has if I remember right, I think he's in like Afghanistan or something right now. Oh. He said, working in an Iraq right now and love the videos. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can't hear over the fan. So he is, it is the right one. So I was right. See? Well, it's not quite, but. Is this the new airbrush? 
You know, I have somebody in uh, this. It's not a new airbrush. No, um, it's one I'm testing. I actually have a buddy that's in Iraq. No, I wouldn't call him my buddy, but he, I've uh, talked to him a lot on Instagram. And they have a hard time getting Metal Flake there in Iraq. And he keeps telling me, you know, send me some flake, man. Like, I need to be able to do this. You can't buy it there, apparently. But, uh, yeah, it was interesting to see them uh, liking the custom paint. Because, like, when we were in Morocco, uh, there wasn't there wasn't any custom paint. You don't see anything like that. In fact, when we went to um, uh, Barcelona, the, I, w- I was getting a tattoo down there, and the uh, tattoo artist uh, mentioned that if they wanted to have, like, a fancy paint job on a motorcycle or something like that, you, it's 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 pretty much illegal you can't you can't do that to your car your motorcycle and expect to drive it on the road and get it registered unless he did say if you do pay enough money to the government they'll let you have it but um you just have to pay like so yeah so we didn't see in fact when we were in spain i only saw about three harleys and uh, 10 trillion scooters but no, not a whole lot as far as custom paint in those areas. And I found that really interesting. Adam's custom paint gave away the 10 membership. So everyone, everyone that got one, well, a few people are telling him thanks. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Thanks for doing that. Appreciate that. All right. I'm just building up this paint because obviously we have to do layers to this because if we're trying to fill it all in at once the paint's going to be super wet and then being that wet it takes a long time to dry Josh says just makes you love America more freedom is taken for granted some more paint here. How come I'm echoing when I'm talking? I'm it does sometimes. Totally said, hey man, I found your channel a few days ago and fell in love with the content and have watched the majority of your videos and now I want to attempt this so badly. Yeah, cool. You can go back and watch all the the previous lives. They're all pre-recorded. And um, I don't know if you've already watched those. Like I said, you probably get the most knowledge out of these live events because there is questions being asked. But yeah, they do take a long time to get through. Jay said, new tattoo, what'd you get? uh, Say that one more time. New tattoo, what'd you get? Uh, I got a, what's it called, a mosaic? It's a tile. I got a tile. Nothing too fancy. Barcelona symbol, isn't it? Bar- Yeah, it's just a tile from Barcelona that you would see, like, on the streets. I had to thin this paint out a little bit more. It was pretty thick. Is there a special way to wrap a freshly painted tank or fender if you have to ship it somewhere? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. If you have a freshly painted tank, is there a special way to wrap it? Do you need to ship it? Yeah, so I would wait. Um, I usually like to wait a week. And then I would I go buy the Harbor Freight uh, shipping blankets. Because... You can get one of the bigger ones for like 10 bucks. Wrap the tank up in that, and then I'll use some uh, shrink wrap to kind of hold it in. But don't shrink wrap it too tight. Just shrink wrap it tight enough to keep the 
the blanket attached. But yeah, I like to I like to use that rag rather than bubble wrap because bubble wrap is so expensive anyways. It, and then once the customer gets those blankets, they feel like they're getting something more than just, you know, bubble wrap. All right, we almost got it here. Yeah, best of luck, Tolly. Agreed with Big Country. Best of luck and prayers for a healing fast, for sure. That black face co or that let's see, that black face looks like it's laying down very nicely with that airbrush. Yeah, it is. Usually you wouldn't attempt to do, to do all this with a regular airbrush. Uh, it would take too long and then the chances of missing something uh, is pretty high. Why is it hard for these companies to make a true candy black or candy pink? What is it about it? Uh, we have a candy black and it works great. Um, to be honest, I've never, when I found it through my manufacturer, I thought, holy crap, is this thing really, is this really going to work? And it did. Um, candy pink, really tough. It's, um, it's just a hard pigment to come by. Um, pinks are, it takes a lot to do just a little. So they, um, like even the house of color pinks are almost like a purplish, uh, and it takes a lot, like it takes a, a lot more of a mixture of concentrate in order to do the same thing. But you're right. Pink is a tough one. Have you ever used a harder and Steinbeck Colony gun? Uh, yeah, uh, not that particular gun, but I have used that brand before, a long time ago. Uh, I, I was new, so to be honest, I don't know if it was good or not. Are you going to do more mini helmets and hoods? Uh, mini helmets. I probably will do another mini helmet coming up. We almost got this done here and I'll go ahead and pull the tape and then we'll go, we'll go ahead and give away another one of those hood panels along with the microfiber roll, a three pack of those rolls. I just want to make sure, um, cause I don't want to have to retape this back up if I happen to miss something, you know? So I'm going to make sure that it's covered. Looking good. Don't want any tiger striping going on. Also, if this was a get okay, out, this wasn't a black base coat and this was a silver base coat or anything with a metallic in it, you're best off using a paint gun rather than. Um, an airbrush like this um, you're gonna it'll, you'll end up getting a lot of modeling uh, the nice thing about black is you could spray three times the amount of black here than here even if it's full coverage um, you're not going to notice the difference when it comes to metallics y y you it's better to spray it all in uh, bigger lighter coats A 
Okay. Let me double check the bottom of this right here. Okay, I think we're good. You could also take a flashlight at this point, and if you were to shine it on there, um, it would give you a better view of exactly um, how well the paint laid out and if there's any spots uh, that may need a little more paint. But I've doused this thing pretty good, so. why it wouldn't be covered all right all right let's go ahead and give something away we'll go ahead and give one of those away and then give this a second to dry and uh we'll pull the tape what do you think Uh, we'll do the hood panel and the microfiber rolls. All right, good luck, guys, guys and girls. Sharon, 88. You did it. You won it. So info at limelinepaintsupply.com. Uh, just give us your address you want that shipped to, and we'll get that panel and those microfiber rolls shipped out to you. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Expose this thing. No, Mr. C, I didn't see your question. Asking for a friend, Adam, as long as I, as long as I don't add reducer to my base coat that I have mixed my candies in, I shouldn't have to worry about the paint getting CD, should I? Um. Yeah, so usually on um, candy paints, they're um, they're pretty good because they can start they'll start to like gel up a little bit, but you can always add reducer to kind of bring them back to life. Um, but if yeah, if you ever see like it starts to get a little thick and a little gelled up, you can always add a little bit of reducer. Uh, pigment paints are a little bit different. Once they start to harden up, um, they they kind of lose their life. They could, it's hard to get them back into a liquid and they could get a little chunky. But yeah, just a little bit of reducer will bring those back to life.
Looks like we got a little bit of overspray right here. We'll go ahead and address that. Do any of your paint guns, are they able to use Luma lights? Any of the paint guns? Oh, uh, good question. Um, yeah, I'm not sure on that on the Luma lights, if any of the paint guns. You could. I know that um, in the past, they, you can send them in and they can, uh, they'll make one to fit. Because usually all, all you have to do is modify uh, modify it a little bit. And I think that's... I actually have one hooked to, to one of my other guns. And the Iwata fit, but I had to modify it a little bit. So yeah, good question. Um, I, those guys could probably help you out. And I think they definitely would if you're looking to fit one. Sorry, Swampy, I didn't see your question. I'm glad you asked, Mr. C. Sometimes with the Lime hashtags and stuff, I, I do miss the questions, so don't be afraid to just ask again. Does the flat, does the black out of the airbrush lay down flat or is there still orange peel? Uh, no, it's pretty flat. Um, it's actually much flatter than if you would have sprayed it with a gun. It's And it's a lot thinner, too. Like, once we pull these, like, there's not much of a paint edge there. If you were to spray this with a gun, you would apply it. Uh, because the droplets are so much bigger, you would have to apply more paint to be able to get full coverage. The fact that the airbrush is... Um, spraying out small um, droplet sizes, it, um, it's more efficient. Oh, it looks like I got some, a little bit of overspray right there that I have to clean up. Mike asked, Ash, have you ever painted anything? No. What do you mean you haven't painted anything? I did the marbleizing on a tank with you. Mm -hmm. And you've uh, pinstriped? Mm hmm. That's pretty good. Then I turn the leaf. Yep, you've done that. Oh, I did help you paint a little bit of the Impala. Oh, yeah. Kind of, right? A little bit. Can I mix black candy with your other candy colors to make them darker? Um, you can, but it's going to kind of mud them out. Um, if you want them darker, you can do more coats, or you can mix them a little stronger as well. Would you use car rep clear coat on a fuel tank and sand it down, cut and buff if you had to? Mm, if I had to, yeah, I would if I had to. But uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't trust a can clear coat on a customer's parts. Now, if I was painting something else that didn't matter as much like a skateboard or some kind of artwork that went inside, then, um, then yeah, I, I would definitely use that. I feel like that makes the job a lot easier. But when it comes to cut and polishing and you need to get enough thickness of clear coat in order to be able to cut it down smooth to be able to polish it. And then also on a fuel tank, you, you have to be, sure that that's actually a 2k paint you know because car rep is um from what i understand it how it works is uh they take the i can't get this thing off 
they take the uh, the water out of the so part A and part B are together, but as long as they take the water out of it, um, the it actually won't activate. So those two can mix together, um, and they won't chemically activate until there's uh, some kind of moisture. And when you spray it into the air, the air has moisture in it, and once it, it's um, introduced to that, the activator will kick in. And it turns into a, a 2K once it's sprayed, and once it's uh, once it's exposed to uh, oxygen that has water in it. But yeah, it's a little like how much like if there's not enough uh, if there's not enough humidity in the air to be able to activate it, that could be a problem. Um, so yeah, it's just a it could be a little risky. I noticed that when I was leafing, there was a lot of small wrinkles that I could not get out. Do you run into this when you leaf? Uh, did you say ripples or bubbles? Wrinkles. Is there a way to turn that noise off? Can you hear me? It's all the way down. Um, yeah, you just want to make sure that you're laying the, the leaf down flat. But yeah, I know what you're saying because if you say like you lay down the leaf and it and it gets a little bit wrinkled, when you lay it down, you just want to make sure you try to get it as smooth as possible. A little bit of wrinkle is not going to matter a whole lot, but um, yeah, once it starts to fold over itself, it uh, it looks completely different. You can always double leaf it too, so if that does happen, you can just leaf it again. Adam's Custom Shop said, those plastic razor blades work great. I thought they were a bit gimmicky at first, but don't mark up the paint edges. Love them. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, if you're doing this with a razor blade, you got to be super careful not to to cut into your paint. Smokey said, that looks good. Mr. said, it looks excellent. Yeah. I mean, it has a few flaws that in it that... Uh, I'm going to need to correct, but the fact that I have that I've painted over clear coat that's been sanded, um, we're able to clean up some of this overspray by uh, just sanding it or um, scratching it away. I got oh, a couple more right there. Did you put the Harley decal on? Uh, no, I'm going to do that. So th I'm going to do that in the next layer. I just used that decal to make sure that uh, my placement was going to be correct. But yeah, so. At this point, what I would do is I would match up the other side. So now that we have this done, I would go ahead and match up uh, what we got going on over there on that side. There is a couple, there's a few problems. See, like right here where the tape went underneath, let me get this a little closer, right here where the tape went underneath, um, that wasn't quite a clean edge right there. So as long as the there's no black overspray in the orange, I'm gonna be able to clean that up pretty easy. Um, but what we do wanna make sure is like right here, where we have some overspray right there. So what happened is the tape lifted up a little bit, the masking tape, and uh, blew a little bit of black paint on that side right there. So what I'll do I prefer to sand it sand it off because um, 
you use lacquer thinner, sometimes you can accidentally like you can get into more trouble than what you want to because if you were to get lacquer thinner on this black, it's going to come right off. Sharon sent a three dollars super sticker. Oh, right on. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you. Oh, okay, so so that's the nice thing about having um, 2K clear coat over top of that base coat, and that and we're doing those graphics on top of that because, like I said, anything happens right there. It's um, it's easy just to clean up the overspray. Same thing with right here. There's a little bit. Can you spray clear coat out of that airbrush gun? Um, not this airbrush gun. It's not really meant for clear coat. Um, if you, you can, you would be able to, if you're like painting small, like die cast models or something like that, maybe you can get away with it. But, um, but no, you really need a bigger gun, but that's when that mini paint gun's going to come in handy because that will actually spray clear coat and, um, it's going to require a lot less air. So if you have a smaller airbrush, or I mean a smaller compressor, most likely uh, uh, this gun will work for you. Have you ever thought about clear wrapping your fender and tank to help with chipping? Uh, I I have, but I've never really felt the, the need to do that. Especially being a painter myself, like I'm always able to fix everything that that happens. Okay, let's uh, some glass paint over right here. Make sure it's this glass cleaner. Is the minigun going to be about the size of the LPH 80? Um, yes, something very close to that. Uh, but it's going to be a smaller tip size because I don't know if the that H80 comes in a uh, 0 0.08. The nice thing about using solvent-based paints is we're able to use um, glass cleaner to be able to clean up some of the overspray and um, some of the just the paint dust that lays on it. None of those on this one. All right. So let's, uh, where that? Here it is. So yeah, that's it right there. So I, uh, I'm really happy with the way that looks. Um, still have a little bit more uh cleanup to do here on the black because it looks like we're missing a little bit of black paint but i can address that in the next layer um once this is clear coated also once it's clear coated and it's sanded down what i'll do is lay out the well what i'm going to do is lay out the gray paint with the airbrush lay this down on and then re-black this back out right here um, I probably could have done it on this round, but uh, I kind of like for this. I kind of want to wait because I'm not this. This may be a little smaller than what I'm wanting. I might actually reprint this and make it a little bit bigger. But once again, just it's kind of just uh, laying out the tape lines, seeing what looks good. If it looks good, go with it. If you don't like it, um, try something else. Like right here with the black, I don't know if you can see real close right here. You can also use a razor blade.
And see that? Since it's clear coated, we're able to clean that edge up. It's a little bit of paint there. And then also like right here, see that little strip of black right there? And then uh, a little bit of black needs to be fixed right there that little tiny chunk right there but once again all the black can be fixed on the next layer we just want to make sure that if it's in the orange um, that it's free of any kind of overspray because that's going to be much harder to fix okay that's looking great yeah, i'm really happy with how that turned out um but I'll be doing more on this, and uh, if you guys check out on the membership page, I'll go ahead and keep you guys posted um, so for the, you members can see how I do the um, that emblem. And then um, I'll be matching up the other side and adding some, like, I think my plan was to add, like, see these little chunks right here? I was going to add some silver ones right there that are going to match the emblem. Same thing with right here. I might add some light chunks of dark gray that'll kind of blend in with the black nothing too prominent nothing with a whole lot of contrast i would like those two colors to to blend together so dark gray with black with the contrast of this bright orange i feel like it's gonna look really good but that's it guys looks like we've been on here for a little over two hours so that took us some time i thought this was gonna be a quick one but um but yeah i'm glad uh glad it worked out for us and Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two. Uh, appreciate all the super chats and all the the kind words everybody said. But uh, we're back every Thursday. We're here, 8 o'clock. And um, next week will be something completely new, or maybe we'll be working on this again. Who knows? But any other questions real quick before we take off? Nope. All right. Sounds good. Well, thanks, everybody. Appreciate you being here. And we'll see you next week. Good night, guys. Well, we'll see you guys. <laughs>